Hi everyone, my name is Brooke and I'm a geologist. In this episode, I'm going to show you the basics of field geology, starting with what equipment you might need and then some simple ways to record your geological observations. I'm back home at Whitby in the northeast of England, near where I grew up, and as you can see, it's a pretty cool place to do some field geology. As well as showing you the basics of field geology, we're going to look at some of the fantastic fossils and rocks you can find around here. It's a well worth a visit if you ever get the chance and you'll probably see pretty quickly why growing up around here is one of the main reasons why I got into geology and I'm so enthusiastic about rocks and fossils. If you want to see those other videos make sure you subscribe and that way you won't miss out when I upload them and you can check out all the other videos as well that will teach you about other aspects of geology not just about the Jurassic Coast of North East England. Let's go lick some rocks! The first and most important thing you'll need to be a geologist is enthusiasm and a genuine interest in the subject. There's no point in studying something or learning about something if you're not actually interested in it. And if you're watching this video, you're probably as interested in rocks and fossils and enthusiastic about them as I am, as you can tell from my awkward delivery. <laughs> and that can mean that you just want to collect rocks and fossils as a hobby, as something fun to do at the weekend, or you maybe as you're a student studying geology and you want a career in it, or maybe you want to change career later on. There's no right reason to do it other than you're genuinely interested and it's what you want to do. Don't forget as well that geology is for everyone. The story of the earth is, is our story as well. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, if you're interested in geology, then it's for you, not just for scientists. So let's go and get stuck in. I'm gonna lick some rocks, so good. So you've got the enthusiasm, you've got the interest. Next thing you need is gonna be a bit of equipment to get you going. You might have seen in films that geologists and earth scientists have lots of fancy equipment and field gear and stuff, but you, you don't really need any of that to get started. So the first thing, if you're gonna be outside, is field clothes. I'm wearing some pretty typical field gear now, but you can wear whatever's available to you. You don't have to buy professional fancy field gear. Just buy what, just get whatever is available and use whatever you've got. The most important things are that the clothes are appropriate for the environment. So I'm here in Northeast UK in January. So it's cold, it's potentially gonna be wet. So I've got lots of layers that I can take on and off. And I've got a waterproof coat and I've got sturdy trousers. trousers. Most important thing though, if you can't afford anything else, is to try and make sure that you've got boots with ankle support and then firm soles. Because walking on rocks in like your sneakers your trainers, your plimsolls, whatever you want to call them, I've done it, it's not a good idea. You can break your ankle and it just bloody hurts as well. And also it's quite slippy if you're near the coast like I am or the rocks are wet. If you're working near roads or, or there's uh, active quarry workings going on, you shouldn't be in active quarries though, or you're in remote locations, it might be a good idea to have a high-vis jacket like uh, cyclists wear or some highly visible bright clothing so that if you have a problem, rescuers and other people can see you from a distance. It's no good if you pass out or bang your head or whatever and you're lying on the floor in the same wearing clothes at the same colours as the rocks. No one's going to see you. So high -vis some form of high-vis clothing is, is a good idea. Next up, there's a helmet. So helmets aren't magic. If there's a rock slide, it's not going to save you. But what it will help you with is banging your head and then the little chips and bits of gravel, especially the kind of stuff that seagulls might knock off. And like wearing a bike helmet, that can be the difference between you walking away with a sore head or not walking away at all. Now, I've seen people badly injured and even killed by tiny little rock slides. So always wear a helmet if you're gonna be near cliffs and overhanging rocks. And only work near cliffs and overhanging rocks if you've got absolutely no other choice. So I won't do it unless I have to, and you shouldn't either. No foot rock or fossil is worth risking your life and safety for. Very funny, I know. So that's it for your most basic equipment. You can now go out and look at rocks and enjoy them and be uh, protected from the elements and comfortable in your environment and have a nice time and have fun doing it. But if you want to take things further and you want to make some more detailed geological observations and catalogue your finds or learn how to, to record things so you can study it later, you might need a bit more equipment and we'll have a look at that now. So a notebook is really useful. I use these right in the rain brand ones. I'm not sponsored by them or anything yet, but any brand will do. I like these ones because they're waterproof. They're hard backed so I can write on them when it's whatever the weather's doing. I have these little elastic bands on them to hold the pages down when it's windy. And they have these millimeter squares, which means I can draw on it, I can write on it, and I can grid it out and make maps and record all kinds of data really easily. I also have these little ones when I'm writing stuff down as well. 
And like I said, right in the rain, um, are really good because they're tough, they're waterproof. Uh, you need a, a permanent marker or pencil to write on them, though you can't use Biro, but they are really good. And they're a little bit expensive, but I need to keep my, my research for years, so I need them to be durable. You, you might not need that level. But really, any type of notebook you've got is gonna be fine. If you've got a softback notebook, then you can use a clipboard like this. Mine has a, a lid on it, so I can shut it. And you can use this for when you're making maps as well. And these are pretty cheap to pick up, but use whatever you've got available. Pens and pencils now to write in your notebook. If you're using writing a rain type, you're gonna need a permanent marker uh, and, or a pencil because they don't take ballpoint. Permanent markers are really good as well for making maps, um, for draw, writing on your samples and writing on your sample bags as well. Again, you don't have to use expensive brands, just get whatever you can and use whatever's available. It doesn't matter at all. I like these mechanical pencils because they're really durable. I can load them up in advance and I don't have to faff around with sharpening them and when they go blunt and because um, I've always got like a, a standardized line and I can do fine work because I like to record lots of detail because I'm a nerd like that. Colored pens and pencils are good. Try and get permanent ones. You can use these for mapping. They'll help when you're making your diagrams. You will need to sharpen them. You can always do that at the end or the beginning of every day before you get going. And they'll help you when you're recording detailed data like the colors of rocks or when you're making your maps and important notes and things. It's always useful to have around. Hand lens. This is so you can spy up close on the rocks and see what the grains are, especially useful if like around here, you've got lots of fine grained rocks or finely crystalline rocks like basalt or worse, marble, pure marble. You don't need to get an expensive one. Check that it's got at least a five times magnification or up to 20 times if you're feeling fancy. Some of them have multiple lenses. Mine only has one. It's all I need, really. You can get ones with lights. You can get expensive name brand ones, but they all do the same thing. So just get whatever one you can afford or, what, or use whatever you've got. Magnifying glass as well is good, but hand lenses are smaller and you can pack them away. Less chance of breaking them. Compass Clino. So as well as helping you navigate, a Compass Clino will also help you take geological readings. And I'll show you that in a different video. So make sure you subscribe so you can check that out. They're also useful for another a number of other reasons like navigation. Um, and you can use them for drawing straight lines. Generally very, very useful bits of equipment. And you can use the, the mirror if you're in trouble to reflect the sun and try and get help. Sample bags. This is really useful if you're doing detailed work and you need to know exactly what position and location you got your samples from and you don't want to get them mixed up. If you're just collecting pebbles and rocks for fun, you don't really need them. You just stick them in a carrier bag in your backpack. Sample bags will also keep your samples nice and, nice and uh, safe. Sample bags will also stop your samples getting the inside of your backpack dirty as well. I just use these Ziploc sandwich bags from the supermarket. They're not fancy. They're not a brand name. They're really cheap. You can get lots of them. Some people like these cloth sample bags, but they're a bit more expensive and they leak. So if you've got wet samples or samples that might decay quickly or with organic matter in them or whatever, then these aren't very good. Also a backpack is really useful. You can carry your lunch in it, you can carry your equipment, things like safety blanket and whatnot, and your first aid kit, all of your samples when you've collected them. Get a good backpack, you don't need a fancy one. You just need one that's strong and durable and it's gonna last you a while. And it's a good idea to check it's got a waterproof cover. So I use this big one, this is actually a DJ bag of all things because it was cheaper and larger capacity than a regular rucksack and it was all I could afford at the time, but it's doing me well. I have, a, I have this big one for traveling and going around and then I have a smaller day bag when I'm just doing little day jaunts and I don't need to carry much stuff with me. Finally, we've got the thing that most people associate with the geologists and earth scientists and paleontologists, and that's a hammer. So we don't go around hammering stuff randomly and willy-nilly for the fun of it, despite what you might see on TV. Hammering is to knock a little chip off so you can see a fresh unweathered surface and it's for collecting small samples. You have to check where you're going that you're allowed to, to collect samples. So here we can't hammer off the, the cliffs because we can't to want to destroy these beautiful fluvial outcrops. But for breaking up smaller loose samples, they're really useful. Again, you don't need a fancy, expensive, proper geology hammer. Just get a rock hammer. Do not get a wood hammer and try and use that because the steel in them is much softer than the rocks usually and the steel can splinter and end up in your eye and also that brings me on to the next thing, is safety goggles. If you're gonna hammer, use safety goggles, okay? I've had to have metal and rock chips pulled out of my eye. It's not fun. Wouldn't recommend it, because they do it while you're awake. Better to look like a dork while you're hammering 
and then to end up having to go to hospital and then having bits of metal pulled out of your eye while you're awake. It's not fun, it's gross. It makes me go all squiggly just thinking about it. Don't do it. Same thing if you need chisels and, and metal tools like that. Make sure they're cold chisels or for working with rock specifically. And you don't need to get expensive brand names one brand name ones. I've got all of those kind of tools, but most of the time I just am using my hammer. I hope you enjoyed that little introduction on what you need to do field geology, and I hope you found it useful. I'll be doing videos on the geological field techniques like taking strike and dip measurements and drawing diagrams in the future videos in this series so make sure you subscribe so you can check them out and don't miss them i'll be putting them in a playlist as well and i'll probably link that in some place at some point people keep walking past them and like what are those people doing if you want to help me make more videos in the future you can go up the link below and pick up one of these snazzy protozoic park or steward the with carbonate t-shirts and there'll be more t-shirts available soon if you've got an idea for a t-shirt or some kind of rock or fossil you'd like to see on a t-shirt let me know and i can make it happen as always if you've got any questions Put them in the comments below. Let me know what field geology you've been doing, what, what things you've found while you've been out and about. I'd love to hear about it. So until next time, thanks for watching. Take, Take care, care. And I'll, I'll see you near the rock nerds. Bye. <laughs> why, why, why is it always so awkward when I say goodbye? Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>